good morning, good morning. Um, people of God, how are you doing this morning? I hope you all are fine this morning. Okay, yeah, it's good to be on here. It's good to be on here, right? Many of you was on this morning for 3 a.m. prayer watch. And um, thank you all for being there. I'm just going to give Facebook. Facebook is just um, doing its rounds right now, notifying you guys that we're here. Okay, so uh, thank you for coming in. Let me know that you're here. Say good morning so you don't feel like I'm on my own. <laughs> um, yes, so God is good. God is good. Um, this morning, one of the things that the Lord was talking to me about, hey, Charlene, it's good to have you here, Charlene, this morning. Oh, let me just start by saying my name is Mercy March Jenkins. I'm a pastor, prophet, publisher, and I'm here for Prophetic Voice of Victory. As you can see, I'm on my own, my host, I'm the co-host. Um, Apostle James Duncan is, uh, is recovering right now. So we thank God um, that he's healing up and getting some much needed rest. Um, we'll be traveling next week, um, but the program will continue. Um, and so uh, we want to make sure that he is good, well, and rested for the travels that are ahead. And we have big travel plans. And our, our itinerary is um, very jam-packed. So we want him to get the rest uh, for the uh, missions work that we're going to be doing. To We're going to the nation of Antigua. I've never been to Antigua before, and that was a beautiful place, and I'm super excited about going. Um, I've never been there before, uh, but God is so good. He's just so good, and I thank God uh, for this uh, wonderful um, opportunity to minister um, alongside Apostle. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you. I see you here, Pastor Sandra. I see you here, Sister Vanessa. Good morning to you. Blessings. Yeah, so this morning, um, the Lord was really ministering to me about the spirit of rejection. And this morning, we had took it up as a prayer point, too, as well. And um, the spirit of rejection would make one to feel unloved, unloved, and unwanted unloved and unwanted. And uh, many of you have experienced rejection, like I have experienced rejection, okay? Uh, and uh, many of you have um, fought it and have overcome it, okay? Uh, because rejection is a thing that can really control your life because of the trauma that you have experienced behind feeling rejected. And it's Ephesians 1 and 6 that reminds us that we are accepted in the beloved. Christ accepts us. And so uh, we may have been raised in the family household that um, we was rejected. Maybe the family composition, uh, maybe you was the last child or maybe your um, existence was as a result of maybe date rape or maybe it was um, out of wedlock or it was um, an affair. Maybe it was um, at a, a, a teenage pregnancy, right? All these factors will impact uh, how you're feeling loved or unloved. Okay, or maybe you you came about at a time when uh, both of your parents no longer wanted children. Maybe they had children, you was the last born. Maybe it was unexpected, right? It was unexpected. All those issues uh, will have uh, an impact, okay? Or maybe it wasn't necessarily around the birth, but as you grew, 
uh, you grew in the household that operated under um, a competitiveness and favoritism. And so therefore you felt unloved, unwanted, and that somebody else appeared to be more wanted and more loved than you, okay? All these issues create a situation in a child's heart and an adult's heart that feel unloved and unwanted, okay? And so the part that the Lord showed me is, is that uh, when people reject it, it's a trigger, it's a switch that the enemy can use to actually manipulate and control their mind. It becomes a device, it becomes a device, a working mechanical device, okay? And uh, one of the things is we know that God is love and he is a father. And we know that he chastises those that he loves, okay, as a father would, as a father should, okay? And we know that it is important for us um, in order to um, gain God's approval, okay, if you will, that we have to walk in obedience, okay? That's an expectation that he has. We have to walk in obedience, okay? When we walk in obedience, um, we win God's favor, okay? We win his favor. If you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land, okay? We saw what happened with Cain and Abel both had an offering, but one was accepted and the other offering was not approved, okay? The offering was not approved, okay? And uh, he felt rejected. And instead of him thinking to himself, I need to do better, okay? It was a trigger for him and it triggered him to uh, to a fight and oppose the person that received the favor instead of him saying, I need to change. It wasn't about him. It was about his embarrassment. That was the rejection. He felt embarrassed. And so to not feel that emotion of embarrassment, okay? He said, let me get rid of him so now I won't feel the rejection anymore. <laughs> so you see how rejection is really a gate and it becomes a device, okay? Because with the rejection, the hurt, there comes bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, and every evil thing, okay? Just like jealousy. When people are rejected, it also activates the spirit of jealousy. And we know with jealousy comes murder. Okay, comes murder. That's, that's what is associated with jealousy, is murder and hate. Okay? And, and who can keep somebody from that rage and, and that, uh, that burning uh, hatred and anger uh, when somebody, when, when murder, when, um, sorry, when jealousy is sparked, when jealousy is sparked, okay? And often, we're not necessarily jealous of people. We are just embarrassed and hurt from the rejection. It's really the rejection, I would say, is more common. And then it is looking towards that person, just like Abel did. He looked towards Cain and said, you're the problem. If I get rid of you, then I won't feel rejected again. I feel rejected because you was approved. Right? You was approved and I was rejected. So if I get rid of you, then I get rid of the problem. Well, we know that's the spirit of deception. And it's delusional. It's very delusional. But we know that uh, when we operate in hurt, it's very easy for us to be deceived. Okay? The heart man is desperately wicked. Who would have known it? Okay? When you're wrapped up, warped into that... Uh, mindset you're choked and you can't see you become blind 
okay? You become blind and you just cannot see. The importance is, is that you can move into witchcraft unknowingly. Unknowingly, you can move into witchcraft from there, okay? Uh, the control, the wanting of control, controlling people so that you don't have to feel that rejection, okay? Then that becomes witchcraft, okay? And so uh, what we... And, and so the uh, the what the Lord showed me was the regression. It was the regression. People are regressing backwards instead of progressing and advancing as adults and maturing. Okay, we are regressing. We're going back. Okay, and uh, we're acting um, as a child would. Okay, that knee jerk reaction of um, hating on you know. Your, your friend, your brother, your sister. I don't want to play with you no more. Right, that type of behavior, right? Okay, and so God wants us healed. Okay, he wants us healed. He wants us restored, right? He wants to use us and he doesn't want the enemy to mechanically set a trap and we just fall for every single time, okay? We're on a battlefield and... You know, I always tell people when I take them out as a team, I say, look, the enemy is going to hit the weakest link, okay? You got all in your heart. The, the, the weakest link is the one that's going to be targeted, okay? That's how that works, right? So you have to really govern your heart, govern your spirit, govern your uh, yourself, right? Really, it's governing your flesh uh, because that's where the enemy is going. He's going to poke it. All right. And he knows how he can get you quickly out of position when you're unhealed in your emotions. Right. And so it is important for us to heal and see God for restoration. Amen. Because it did not end well for Abel. It did not end well for Abel. OK. God checked him and said, where's your brother? Am I my brother's keeper? It, it, it didn't go well for him, okay? God held him accountable is what I'm saying. God held him accountable for his actions, okay? He asked him the question, okay, knowing exactly what he did. He thought he did in secret like God would never know, okay? But he was blinded by the rage. He was blinded by the anger. He was blinded by the hurt. And that was the offense, Okay, shifted him that he became delusional and did not even factor in. Uh, oh my God, God is so watching right now. It ain't even worth me even doing anything, right? God is watching me, right? He didn't even factor that in because he was so engrossed in the emotions and the emotions were just firing off and he was led by the emotions. He allowed the emotions to lead him. And uh, he so wanted to be without that type of pain, that emotional turmoil, that he was lied into believing that if he got rid of his brother, that he would feel better. Okay. And he believed that. And so we know he believed it because it's what he went for. Okay. But it didn't work. It didn't, it didn't work. Okay. Same thing with um, Judas. When Judas felt justified, in betraying Christ. He felt justified in doing it. He went to the high priest and, uh, he, you know, he he traded him off, okay? He received um, some money. He traded Christ and received some money and, uh, you know, feeling like, oh, I'm going to be doing great. I've got some money. Do, 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 do. Maybe I will buy, right? Um, but that was blood money. Okay, he spilt the blood of an innocent one. Okay, and that is one of the seven deadly sins. Okay, and so that did not go well for him at all, at all. Okay, and so um, we have to be very careful of our emotions and making an emotional decision that will have a permanent circumstance and consequence. 
okay? And it's the power of the emotions. And so we have to govern the emotions so that it doesn't take us down a rabbit hole of delusions, okay? A rabbit hole full of delusions and uh, that we're blinded and operating as blind witches, okay? And blind witches in the sense of working witchcraft, but doing it blindly, doing the work of witchcraft and not being aware of it, okay? All right, so we need to be very careful of that. I say that because as I was praying last night and the free and prayer, these are the things that God was ministering to me about and he was ministering to me about blind witches, okay? Blind witches. Blind witches are, uh, can be people of God, can be anybody, but they're working on the work of darkness blindly, okay? And I'm not talking about to the extent of work in the occult. I'm not talking about at that extent. I'm talking about from the extent of working the works of the flesh, envy, um, rivalry, um, just darkness, um, jealousy, hatred, murder. Um, just working with these these things and these feelings and devices and uh, choosing to make a decision based off of those things. Excuse me. <coughs> and um, saying things and doing things, right? Not necessarily operating in a coven or with a, uh, a religious cult, not necessarily, you could be a born again Christian, but just walking in your flesh and, and your flesh just having a field day. Okay. So, um, so yeah, we can, uh, you know, we always teach that there's a thin line between the prophetic and uh, witchcraft. Okay. So um, hopefully that makes sense to you. The thin line. We can operate in powers and in discernment and we can easily cross over if our hearts is not given to God. We can easily cross over and allow the enemy to be um, using us with familiar spirits, okay? Because every evil work is there, all right? And so that's why we have to make sure that jealousy is not there. That uh, if jealousy is activated through rejection, deal with the rejection. <laughs> deal with the rejection, Okay. This is what God is saying. Deal with the rejection and you won't go run, you won't go down the rabbit hole. Okay. Be healed. Be restored. Okay. Um, many people get seriously triggered um, because of their past and their experience um, with being spiritual, uh, having spiritual parents. People get um, activated having, um, being, being in a, um, a place where there's so many spiritual sons and daughters, right? People get activated doing the work of ministry because of what happened in their family, okay, and how things operated in their family, all the circumstances. And so uh, that can easily bleed over into church, and we have to be careful doing that, okay? We, you know, we, we're, we're learning how to operate and, and how to be um, Christ-like. Okay, and so that will be our part of, that will be our standard um, of operation. And so uh, we always have to look in the word of God and examine our heart, allowing, you know, the Holy Spirit to examine, to ensure that we're not falling through the cracks and, and uh, allowing ourselves to behave according to the past where there was neglect, yeah, you know, where there was neglect, where there was parental neglect, where there was um, a home that uh, was uh, extremely critical, okay, extremely critical, criticizing and um, disapproving and scorning, okay? And um, maybe everyone was scorned, maybe everyone was disapproved, or maybe it was just you, okay? And that was your experience, okay? Um, those are areas of healing. So I raised those areas um, and I'm sure, I'm sure that's um, supporting somebody um, to be able to see, okay, uh, these are bands of wickedness that would tie somebody up, lock them up, that they won't be able to walk in the righteousness 
of God. Okay, they 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 will uh, they will um, have one foot in, one foot out. Okay, and it'd be hard for them to um, to receive Christ's love because they're so used to being rejected. It's hard for them to receive love. First, love themselves and receive love. All right, let me go and see what's going on in these comments. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Um, okay, yes. Be careful. We're making a motion. Yep. Mm-hmm. Jealousy and hate is none of God. That's right. That's right. Think line. Yes, absolutely. Deal with the rejection. There is a yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Thank you for adding that there this morning. All right, let's pray. Father, we give you praise on today. We thank you, God, for just uh, uh, just uh, ministering to our soul today that uh, the enemy would no longer have access to our hearts, our, our, the broken errors of our hearts. Hearts. So, uh, for I hear the Lord say that there is brokenness in thy heart, uh, and I have come to heal thy heart and to clean up the wounds. I have come to to seal up the wounds of old and the wounds of the past. Uh, for this is the season that you should rise up. This is the season in which you shall stand up. This is the season that you shall be healed and fully restored, says God. Wholeness is your portion from this day and this day going forward. I hear the Lord say, repent, repent, repent. This is a time of repentance, says God. Repent and turn thy heart and you shall see me. And you shall see this enemy no more. For the enemy is roaring and he is seeking whom he may devour. But you have repented and received the healing that you deserve. I see the Lord cleansing and purifying the past. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you, O oh Lord. Anything that's hidden in our hearts as an, as an idol, Father, we give it up this morning. We repent repent of our sins. We say, God, forgive us. Forgive us for holding on to childhood hurts, abuses, mistreatment. Mm -hmm. Father God, forgive us, oh Lord, for holding, uh, uh, holding our parents uh, in the bind in our hearts. Oh God, we release them. Every vow that we made, oh God, every vow or anything that we have said that blocks healing, we remove it freely now, oh God. Uh, for God, we say truly, you Use us, use us, use us, use us, oh God. Uh, oh God, we do, we ask that you get the glory out of our lives, uh, that you get the glory out of our stories, that you get the glory out of the things that we had feared, oh God, to talk about. Father God, we thank you for healing today. We receive healing in our hearts, oh God. We thank you, God, for walking us through this process, oh God. Um, Oh, Lord, Father, we receive your love. We receive your love. We receive your love. We bind the spirits of rejection and every spirit that is associated with the spirit of rejection, self-harm, suicide, of thoughts, and ideation, uh, depression and oppression, every thought of insecurity, every thought of intimidation, every thought of inferiority, inferiority. Oh, Father God, we decree and declare, oh God, that they are bound. We decree that they are bound and we loose ourselves, oh God. We loose self-love, self-trust, self-confidence. We lose our trust in you. We lose uh, faith, oh God, to walk with you, oh Lord. Uh, we lose ourselves. We decree and declare that we have the peace of God uh, that rules over our hearts. We thank you for this peace uh, that the world can't give, but you have given it to, unto us. And so we are grateful for this peace. So even concerning who we are and, and uh, where we are in life, we receive this peace uh, and that we don't have to compete uh, uh, to feel worthy.
coffee. We don't have to compete for validation. For you've already validated and approved us and accepted us in the blood. And then for that, we are grateful. Ah, uh, we are thankful, God, for how you created us in you. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in our life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Amen. I pray that blessed you. I pray that blessed you. And, and you that's here, you've never given your life to the Lord. I want to pray for you too. And uh, you that has uh, once walked with the Lord and you walked away and there was just so much that was going on, but you are seeking God back again. And so I want to pray for you and uh, so that you can uh, walk with your heavenly father, for he has a plan and a purpose for your life. And you've been walking around aimless, aimlessly, trying to figure out who you are, trying to figure out uh, what you're supposed to do next in life. Amen. He has all the answers. I don't have all the answers. He has all the answers. But the Bible reminds us that today is the day of salvation. So, Tyria, today is the day that you're rescued from yourself. And so I want you to say this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you this morning as a sinner. And I am a sinner in need of a savior. I thank you for sending your son, your only one and begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for me, that my sins may be atoned. I thank you for cleansing and purifying me. Oh God, Father, I confess with my heart that Jesus Christ is my personal Lord and savior. And I receive him on this morning. I ask Holy Spirit, that you would come into my life. Holy Spirit, I ask that you cleanse me with the precious blood of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would purify my heart and that you would lead me into all truth. Take a hold of my heart from this day and this day forth. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, listen, we are rejoicing with you and so is heaven. And so you can DM us and let us know because we want to support you and disciple you on this process. And we want to invite you. We want to invite you to our services. Come and worship with us at 91-20-146th Street, Jamaica, Queen. Service is at 7.30 on a Friday. This is an in-person service. And on Sunday at 10 a.m. So we're looking forward to having you. Now listen, if you're not in Jamaica, New York, you can um, fellowship with us online. Okay, we're going to be right here on this broadcast at um, James Duncan Facebook page. And uh, you could also sew into him at dollar sign JD Global 5, you can sow there. Oh, thank you, Leslie, for doing this. And uh, you can sow to myself, um, dollar sign Aaron, capital N, Mercy. Okay, capital N, Mercy. You can sow into either of us. Um, uh, this, at this time, we have um, the mission trip that we're going to Antigua, so feel free. Um, to bless us. Uh, I just bought my ticket last night. And so pray for us um, that we will all be able to get our tickets and uh, travel there and uh, be able to bring good um, good gifts to the people of Antigua. Amen. We want to be there and be a blessing to them. So feel free to sow um, and um, um, into the missions, okay, into the missions. That will be super duper great. All right, and um, I just want to give some shout outs this morning. I, uh, I see you. Good morning, um, um, Deaconess um, or Elder. I'm not sure, Leslie. We appreciate you. Thank you for being on here. Sister Renette, I see you. Good morning. Um, Providence Rosetta, I see you this morning. Good morning. And Lorna, good morning to you. Good morning to you. Um, Jayla. <laughs> good morning to you. It's great to have you here this morning. All right, people of God, it's been good. It's been wonderful. We appreciate you. And um, let me just quickly go through the, I almost forgot, but we do have a flyer. This is the flyer for 
the Antigua mission trip. So we have Apostle June Hyatt. She's going to be there. Prophetess Corinne's going to be there. Um, Prophetess Janet's going to be there. Myself and Apostle, we are going as a um, team, a five-person team. And uh, it's Apostle Joseph Prempe. It's his church. Um, they're having the women there having a women's conference. And there will be ordinations going on on Sunday too as well. Amen. And then this coming Sunday, this coming Sunday, we will be having Resurrection Sunday service. Come join us on Sunday at 10 a.m. There is a law, there is a word from the Lord. Amen. There's a word from the Lord. Amen. So we're excited about what is about to come forth. All right. Well, this has been great this morning. I pray that you have been ministered to and strengthened and that um, uh, that uh, the Lord, uh, uh, through this teaching, will uh, do much healing and restoration. Feel free to DM me for your testimonials. Okay, let me know about how this word has touched your heart um, and in what way and what is God doing? Okay, feel free to DM me. I'm looking forward to hearing your testimonials. All right, so um, Jesus love you. Jesus Lord, we love you. And shalom, shalom.